behind AI, there's always a human individual. When you talk about kind of the prompting, when you talk about kind of giving the guidance, as in, I think everybody understands that AI can do technology-wise a lot of things, but how do I really make it work for myself? Good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Danny Kaiwoven. I'm the Global Head of AI at TP. I've uh, been there for the last 50 years and had a great opportunity recently to join the World AI Summit uh, together with uh, Marcel, who will introduce himself. Uh, um, but before we dive right in, um, let's give an initial uh, reflection of, uh, of the, my key takeaway of the World AI Summit. Um, so for me, uh, the biggest takeaway I have uh, there is uh, how quickly basically the conversation is now shifting from away from what's possible to what's responsible. Uh, there's a clear realization now uh, that AI technology, uh, uh, it's not a technology story, it's more like a people story, right? Uh, whether you're building a model or redesigning a customer journey, uh, the real challenge is uh, finding the right balance between automation, empathy, uh, and trust, I guess. Uh, so in short, we, I think we move away a bit now from the AI high, more to a maturity phase where a government, a governance, explainability, uh, and human in the loop are like the key designs of who's going to win this. Uh, how, uh, Marcel, what, uh, what, are your, what are your takes? Yeah, hi everyone. So my name is uh, Marcel Vrieling. Uh, I'm the Chief Business Development Officer for EMEA. Um, yeah, and it was a pleasure to uh, to be there. Uh, and obviously I take it more from a business context, right? So because I'm not uh, into all the technology background, but what struck me is that it's more about kind of in the past, it was more about what uh, AI can do, right? And now uh, it's more about kind of how AI should be done. Uh, and that's kind of what I, uh, what I saw. Um, what you saw a lot is around the security. I think uh, now kind of the companies are more kind of concerned around kind of, okay, so if I kind of implement, what is it about the security? It's more about also the uh, the data. Uh, so how do I leverage the data around this? It's the adoption of AI, which is kind of how do I make uh, people kind of work with AI as well? And how do, how do I make it productive? Uh, and what you also see is a lot around kind of the certification around it. So for me, it's not about just kind of what AI can do, but it's more kind of how 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 it should be done, uh, and that I found uh, quite uh, quite interesting. Then I don't know if you share the same the same observation. New regulations emerging globally, right? We already so in the EU, EU, although we're not always the technology leader, we're the, the leaders in regulation. Uh, so you see, many companies are learning to balance innovation with compliance and trust. Uh, and I see that uh, organizations have to navigate through this balance. Uh, in their AI uh, transformation, um, I think there's, you know, there was a, there were a lot of brands there out there that uh, took that angle, that angle uh, for 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 how they are more or less designing that way, how it should be done, as you were saying. Uh, you know, I've seen PayPal there, uh, Nestle, uh, and it's all about about how to set those foundations. Uh, I would say the most advanced organizations uh, are taking a security by design approach. So how do you not slow down innovation, uh, but still have the security in place, right? So almost like baking the governance in from the start. Um, if I look at how we do that at TP, uh, I would say it almost comes natural to us. I think we've always put security like uh, high in our top uh, priority list. Uh, and, and I think that in the last decades, it allowed us to do uh, scaling of innovation safely with, with safety in mind, making sure that we are uh, compliant with the EU AI Act uh, and, and the regulation like that. So I think we are on the right track there. Uh, have you seen anything around that uh, at the summit? Um, yeah, so you know what I, one of the sessions, and uh, this was on the, the day one, uh, there was a presentation from the Ministry of Defense, uh, which obviously is not very close to the TP world, but sometimes it's just good to kind of listen into kind of what they're doing and uh, uh, how they approach uh, it. And there was also a panel discussion. 
Um, and in that panel discussion was someone as well from Salesforce. And what he said is what you need to understand is that behind AI, there's always a human individual. And that's kind of uh, when you talk about kind of the prompting, when you talk about kind of giving the guidance, giving the training, setting it all up, kind of the ongoing training, etc. There's always a human behind, uh, which to me is a lot in, into that one sentence, right? Because we think kind of, okay, this is technology and technology will solve all of this and there's efficiency gains and there's all kind of examples, right, of booking and there were examples of H&M and there were examples of process, which is in the hospitality world. Um, but but it's always like kind of the adoption of AI is uh, is uh, is crucial, and I think um, that's where to talk in kind of the the Gartner hype cycle terms, right? You you we we're beyond really kind of the technology hype, as in I think everybody understands that AI can do technology wise a lot of things. But it's kind of now you get into kind of the disillusionment and then you get to kind of the level of plateau of kind of acceptance. So kind of, OK, there is technology. There's a lot of changes that's going to happen. But how do I really make it work for myself? And I think that's where a lot of companies were struggling in the discussion. What you saw was also that a lot of companies are still kind of in smaller kind of pilots. They're kind of trying. I've not seen many examples where it's really implemented big scale, right? So as really, so I think we're really at a stage of discovering uh, 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 and really kind of uh, the outcomes yet are still to be seen, right? I don't know if you shared it, but that's kind of what I what I saw from the discussions in the panel discussions. No, I, I fully agree. And I, I think it's almost like a natural transition where we have to go through uh, over time. Uh, you know, I think we've We've went from like more like experimentation now to slowly early stage adoption, and and then obviously now the next coming period we have to see uh, more scaling, and I think that that ties into more or less theme of the summit, where like you say, right? Uh, uh, what can what's possible now, and how do do we do this right? So it it has shifted a bit more from the, the art of the place, the possibility to now let's let's make this more practical. Key takeaways, uh, whereas. Uh, the implementation of uh, some AI solutions in, are kind of done in pockets, uh, but really kind of orchestrating it as a kind of uh, towards a business outcome is 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 crucial. I mean that that's an interesting part. It was one of the sessions that talked about uh, do not focus just on the technology, right? But start kind of really by defining what is the business outcome and what is the business purpose that you want to kind of have supported? And then uh, there's always technology that can support, right? And the technology goes very fast, but never kind of lose out of sight. So technology is not an objective in itself, right? So it's kind of really kind of look at what is the business purpose and the orchestration of, of all of this. I think that's where... Uh, also, if you look at uh, the boots, right, there's a lot of companies that provide technology and a lot of companies that provide kind of implementation of these things and they can run it, etc. But really to have kind of a business process end to end and then orchestrate all of these elements and then in the TP context, right, put it as kind of agentic AI to order to combine with humans augmented with AI uh, and kind of orchestrate this. I think that's still where companies are still kind of struggling in in really kind of uh, executing this. And and what you could see clearly is that um, uh, they need partners. Eh? And you could see kind of there's the PWCs of this world were there, and there is um, EYs of this world were there, right? But also, I mean, TP you can put in the same sequence of the kind of logos that can really orchestrate this end to end uh, for a customer. I think that's that was one of the things as well that I kind of got out of there uh, really, yeah. Yeah, I fully agree. You, you see these companies struggling and I think what points that out very clearly, if, you know, if I'm trying to remember, like did I see real AI in action and did I see really good metrics around the successes, they were quite limited, right? It's uh, I think also there it's more uh, discovered. So, well, what exactly makes your project successful? And from an implementation standpoint, what does it take to make AI uh, production ready? And you know, I think 
in the sessions from Google and, and also AWS, you saw that uh, you know, there's it's it's almost like you have to start trying, right? Testing uh, at a skill is where it's almost like magic happens. And then uh, to make AI production ready, I would say, I think you need you need three things: uh, uh, robust uh, data foundations. You know, how is your how is your data already AI ready? Uh, it needs to be clean. It needs to be anonymized. Uh, obviously, it needs to be continuously improving. Uh, then, obviously, you need these human feedback loops, right? It's like it's it's humans that, like you said before, right? It's humans that are behind the AI. Every AI model has a human behind it. So you need the human feedback loops. You know, experts who validate the data, correct the data, uh, perhaps enhance the model performance. And then finally, you also need this operational integration. So embedding AI into your workflows uh, and not just sitting beside them. So create, how do you create that value? Uh, and I think it's something with, with TP we picked up in, uh, in our, our TP.AI data services where we are offering all, all these type of services uh, to make that happen. Because you see, I think now over time you start slowly seeing your, the differences between AI maturity between all these different companies. Uh, and some are, are very early at that stage. So they don't, even have the data set to start doing it. And then you have uh, companies that are a bit further that, that perhaps want to do starting experimentation with their own models. So they've seen, hey, we can see now what the models can do, but we want to make it more contextualized about our own. So we can start building our own type of models. And then finally, the actual uh, proof of the pudding, eating the pudding is just, how do I can get that model and actually get the value? And I, I think you see, you will see more and more uh, companies that you were mentioning being the guidance of, uh, all right, how do you can get those value out of it? Uh, so it, it, that was a very interesting take, and uh, it's very, you know, it's very cool to see that how that's basically evolving now over time. Yeah, well, you know, you talk about value, but um, um, if you if you look at uh, uh, many of the discussions. Uh, uh, discussions are often around kind of TCO, right? AI equals TCO, which 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 is, I think, a lot of the boardrooms. It's kind of that's the thinking, kind of okay. Let's implement a piece of AI because AI is going to give us uh, a TCO or a cost reduction, or you know. Um, but but if you saw uh, uh, some of the cases, and I'm going back to the H and M presentation that we both uh, saw, is where they created these uh, AI models, right? And the models kind of then presenting kind of the garments and uh, and then being able for customers to liaise more to those AI agents. And they were basically, they said kind of, we are, we are basically telling our customers that these are AI models and models as in kind of real models, right? Real kind of um, uh, boys and girls wearing kind of clo their clothes. Um, and we're, we're telling them, but it's more that kind of our customers can kind of align and liaise with kind of more of the person. And then also these models can be put in different environments. So it basically helps them uh, for their garments and for the sales and the positioning of their garments in the different kind of cities and, and, and models that they're having. So this is for me already kind of a, an additional value that they're getting out. It's not necessarily the the cost per se but it's also like um there's a more personalized kind of positioning and marketing around this it's just one example that i um, that i uh, that i uh, that i saw so i think also often in ai the really kind of what is the additional value that ai will provide because i'm 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 convinced and you could see it as well on the event um AI drives also new businesses. There's new businesses, new industries that are all of a sudden now kind of popping up because of, of this. Danny, what do you think uh, uh, this all means for the customer experience industry? That's a good question. Uh, I think in the end, the way how I look at technology and innovation is the customer always wins. Uh, the, and the companies always, oh, they, they sort of lose because I think uh, the biggest impact on the involvement of technology is that it rises customer expectations. So it's no longer a choice if you have to do or don't have to do things. If your customer expecting it, you have to do it. And that's the same thing with AI, right? Uh, uh, customer will start expecting AI solutions from you. 
in their whole customer journey. Uh, you know, think about uh, in e-commerce on um, delivery. The, you know, it, it's it's an old innovation, but people have options now. If you're not doing next day delivery, they probably will order something else. And I think uh, with all this AI technology coming ahead, it's going to raise uh, customer expectations, and companies need to have to adopt to meet those expectations of uh, of the clients of the customers. How do you see that? Yeah, I, I think uh, in the, especially in the custom experience industry, uh, it's important that the end customer adoption is crucial because we can force it on them. But if if they don't accept, right? But many of the companies should kind of create the boundaries between this to say kind of be ready for the acceleration because the end customer at some point would expect more personalization, would expect a faster and more accurate response. Uh, uh, would maybe uh, expect him to be spoken to in his own language, etc. Right. So, the the expectation of the end customer will go up, and that's what AI facilitates. So maybe not today, but definitely tomorrow. So companies need to be ready and really put the foundations in place to uh, be able to scale fast when the end customer, the market, uh, expects this to uh, to happen. Right. And that varies per industry. Right. So be, because Maybe in the logistics industry, where you have kind of more simple asks, etc., it can be kind of adopted more rapidly because you just want to have an answer and give an answer. But when it comes to banking or more complex products, you still it might still take some more time, and it's more kind of augmenting the human, right, rather than taking and immediately kind of connect with the AI uh, agent. But um, uh, I think the most important thing is be ready. Uh, for a target operating model in three to five years that you have no clue about how it will look like today. Awesome. You're smiling, right? So you agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do agree. I do, I do agree. I do agree. I do agree. And so I want to thank you, Marcelo. It's a, a great hanging out with you, visiting it. I think we've, we've seen a lot of interesting insights. Uh, Definitely. And, uh, we yeah. can bring that into our day to day job and, and go back to work. Absolutely. Thank you.